A very good morning, class 7th. Today we'll be dealing with chapter 3 of your chemistry, that is element, compounds and mixtures. Okay? The name of the chapter itself signifies that we have to deal with three categories, that is element, compound and mixture. Okay? Your chapter has been divided into two parts, A and B. A section deals with elements and compounds. Okay? But as you know that there are millions of substances in the world that such as iron, aluminium, water and so on. They have their different composition properties as well as they are different kinds of matter. Correct? So based upon substances, the scientists have further classified matter or you can call substances into various parts. As you can see on the slide that matter is classified into two substances. Okay, matter or you can call it substances can be classified into two parts that is pure substances and impure substances. Pure substances is further classified into two parts that is elements and compounds and impure substances is classified into two parts that is homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures then you have elements are classified into four parts that is metals non-metals metalloids and noble gases when we talk about impure substances, generally we call it a mixture. It is further classified into two substances, that is homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture. Now, in your section A of your book, we need to first complete the pure substances divided into two parts, that is elements and compounds. Now, first thing comes, what is a pure substance? Okay, so when you say anything is pure, that means it has a definite composition, definite set of properties, it has a definite melting point, boiling point, you know very well that water is, if, if water is pure, it will boil at 100 degrees centigrade only. If it has to melt or it, if it has to freeze, it will freeze at 0 degree centigrade only. That means pure form have a definite melting point, definite boiling point, definite density. Okay? Then, pure substances are always homogeneous. This word homogeneous means that the composition is uniform throughout. That means there will be no change in the composition of the substance throughout. Okay? Then, let me tell you, but a pure substances is classified into two parts, that is elements and compounds. So, elements and compounds, both are pure substances. Then comes your impure substances. Okay? Now, what is impure substance that does not have definite uh, boiling point, melting point, you know very well? And generally, mixtures are classified as impure substances. Okay, you know very well, I have talked about this is B part of your chapter. That means mixtures. Mixing of two elements or compounds together, okay, what happens? The composition changes. So, they do not have a definite set of properties, okay, and they can be separated by physical changes, okay. Example, mixture, example of mixture is air, mixture of various gases, oxygen has its own property, nitrogen has its own property, carbon has its own property, right? So these are what? These are impure substances. Then impure substances were further divided into two parts, homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures, okay? We'll deal it with the, with it in the next. You know very well that pure substances can be classified into two parts. So first one is elements. Let's see what is an element. You need to mark the definitions very well. That element is a pure substance. That is clear. Then 
that cannot be converted further into anything simpler than itself because it is the pure substance it cannot be further broken into simple substances either by a chemical means or by physical means okay that means element has its unique property okay robert boyle was the first scientist to term the word element okay then came Anthony Laurent Lavoisier who established experimentally and gave the definition of elements okay now at present there are 118 elements known okay to us and 92 are natural elements that means they are found in earth crust and 26 are created artificially now some examples of uh, elements you can call it uh, zinc tin etc okay so this is all about elements elements are building blocks of matter okay children now element is further classified into four parts metals non metals metalloids noble gases so first we'll see what actually is a metal okay it is a typically hard opaque shiny and has good electrical and thermal conductivity okay metals are examples of metals are gold silver copper aluminium iron zinc etc okay difference between metals and non metals you know very well we have discussed this in previous class also that metals are shiny and lustrous whereas non metals are non lustrous metals can be beaten into sheets but non metals cannot be okay they have they are good conductors of electricity metals are good conductor of electricity okay they are ductile that means they can be drawn into wires clear so these are the properties of metals some very common metals are gold silver copper aluminium iron zinc tin lead etc and so on non metals are very less in number in comparison to metals they exclude inert gases okay there are only 11 known metals to us okay there are only 11 non metals known to us okay example can be hydrogen oxygen nitrogen carbon chlorine sulfur phosphorus iodine bromine fluorine etc okay now as i have told you that metals are uh, good conductors of electricity non metals are bad conductor of electricity exceptions are there okay then some metals some non metals are good conductor of electricity also okay then i have told you about lustre they don't have lustre non metals don't have lustre okay they have low elasticity okay then they are not ductile so this is all about your non metal after metals and non metals third comes your metalloids now the word itself shows that it is a combination of metal and non metal that means a metalloid has a property of metal as well as some properties of non metal okay then the metalloids have half complete set of electrons in their outer energy level okay now metalloids are generally hard solids okay because they have both the properties of metal as well as non metal example can be boron silicon germanium arsenic antimony and tellurium and last but not the least the fourth one is your noble gases now what is a noble gas the elements that do not react chemically 
with the other elements okay noble gases do not react with the other elements why because they are stable in nature they neither require any electron to maintain their stability nor neither they have to give any electron to the other element to maintain their stability all the shell outermost shell is completely filled of noble gases and there are six noble gases found okay they are helium neon argon krypton xenon and radon so in this slide we have covered what are pure substances impure substances pure substances divided into two parts that is elements and compounds element further classified into four parts that is metal metal non metal metalloids and noble gases i hope each and every point is clear and we will take up compound and characteristics of compound in the next video till then study well all the best